Welcome to Unruly 3, father of three unruly kids. I'm not really. So these legs were a little bit wet, I think, when I had cut them originally. And as I sat in the garage, they had shrunk a little bit, so these joints weren't quite as tight as what I wanted. So I just took a little bit of veneer and then glued it down, and I got a lot tighter grip. So this build was by far the hardest build I've ever done. The biggest, hardest, most complicated. Done things that I've never ever done before. And um, I, I was lucky enough to see Lou Holtz one time and he gave a speech. Lou Holtz was a coach for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And he talked about um, one time he was on a camping trip or on a float whitewater rafting trip and Something happened, but he, he he always would stop, and he would do this thing that he called WIN, and it stood for What's Important Now. And I found myself doing that, using that advice to try to make sure that I was moving forward the right way with this build. And there would be times when I would just stand in the garage, and I would look around, and I would just be so overwhelmed with, well, this needs to be done, and this needs to be done, and I have to do this, and... This has to be done before this has to be done. Trying a hard time trying to figure it out. And I would just stop and I would just say, well, what's important now? Like, what's the first thing that has to be done in this? And that really helped me a lot by working my way all the way through this build. Each day I would have to stop and say, okay, what's important now? What do I got to get done before this happens? Before I finally get to the, build, the part where I'm going to put everything together, last thing you want to do is have a bunch of things glued together and then realize, oh no, I forgot this and this. And so, um, yeah, that was a, the thing that kind of got me through all of this and just going through, not looking at the whole build, but looking at each part you just had to take and well, I can figure that out and I can maybe figure this part out. So definitely helped me out a lot. So this part right here that I'm working on was definitely something that I, um, had never done before and so using the um, my router this way I put lines on the router watched some videos on how people did this um, actually the wood whisperer did this using some um, using dowels to draw board there to draw these pieces in on the end cap I hadn't seen anybody done give an example of how to put the end cap on especially with a solid slab. I've seen people do um, laminated slabs and you use that last piece and you make a big butterfly, not a butterfly, but like a hound's tooth, and you use that on the end. But since I was using a solid slab, I couldn't really come up with that idea. So I made this um, tenon here and then that's gonna be on my end cap. And I'm probably gonna put a butterfly at the end of this. I hadn't done that yet, but I plan on doing it. So here I'm setting up my my dowels so that I can draw board all of these in and get a nice tight grip on them. And making sure that my dowels went through good. I'm using walnut ones. This vise here I'm going to use for my end cap, my end vise. And so I do have to saw these parts away on this tenon, which I spent so much time making sure that I had just perfect. And then now I'm working on my leg chop for my vise. So I wanted to get it nice and have a nice chamfer on here. It's a 45 degree bit. I have a pretty good bite going, but I'm going to raise it up. And I actually tested it on this little test piece. Found out that that was a little bit way too much of a bite that I wanted. So went and lowered it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to run it through and... get this thing looking, getting ready to be at the end. So when I bought my saw stop table saw, I saved up for five years and I figured I better get this um, router lift because if I didn't get it now, I wouldn't get it later. So um, it's probably one of my favorite things I have in the shop, this router lift, so much easier than the system I had before. Now, this is something that was on the what's important now. I wanted to have these grooves into this. I saw the Wood Whisperer. I bought the Wood Whisperer um, bench 
and he made a split top rubo just a little bit ago and so i copied these plans and he did this on his and so i'm running this through now this is manhandling these great big huge slabs which i'm glad i started working out because otherwise i don't know if i would have been able to do it and um that's that new sander i got for christmas the battery makes it really heavy but all right here comes the crazy part i'm going to put this thing together um, I am using epoxy because I, they say the glue just will dry way too fast, and I am so glad that I went with epoxy. Gave me a little bit of time to try to fix all these mistakes. So I wasn't 100% sure that this was all going to fit together right. wanted to give myself a little bit of leeway, so otherwise I would have glued together the end, at least the ends, and then put the stretchers in the middle down, but I wasn't 100% sure it was going to fit perfect. Luckily, it, it did actually doing pretty good, except for this piece that I put in right there, I put upside down, and I had to go back and drill some holes from the bottom, but it ended up working. So this part right here had me super stressed. This part wasn't going on, and you, the amount of panic that you start to feel when you're like, oh no, it's not going in, something's wrong, what's going on? How am I going to get this? But then I just picked up this other side, and this side finally popped right back, right down in. And then this end cap is what was going to make sure everything was all nice and straight. Then start doing my draw boards. Using my dowels to draw board those in and hit it made a huge difference. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit the sander on this. I only sanded the top up to about 180 I think. They say don't have it too smooth so wanted to make sure not to get it too smooth. I didn't go to 320 or anything like that. On the sides, I went pretty high. So now I'm putting the Rockler plates on so that I can put the, so I can move this thing around, the casters. It's cool buying these plates because now I can put these plates onto my lathe um, setup and I can move my lathe setup because I, I can take these caster wheels off and just store them somewhere else but I can use these caster wheels on other things just because I have those plates. Look at the curl on that. So this maple turned out amazing. So the finish I'm using here, it's one half Danish oil. And then I know Danish oil has this oil and part um, poly already mixed, but I wanted to have a little bit thicker poly. So I added a little bit more min wax poly just so that the glue and everything I could wipe up if I did get glue on it and um, so one half that one half min wax and probably another half of my just tears stress and everything else so that is the leg vice that I got off of AliExpress total for it was like $47 it does not turn like a bench craft advice once I got this adjusted, it turns pretty smooth and it's it's pretty effortlessly, but I'm not going to be able to spin that and that thing is going to gonna shut. Like you see, I tried doing it there, but it does turn really, really easy and it has some incredible grip, just incredible grip. Now this is the Wilton vise that I'm putting down at the end and it was pretty, I love this part because I could just tighten the, the piece on, draw my, put in my pilot holes here, put my screws in and... Um, undo it and it was perfect so I've seen this vice a lot on other vices on other workbenches but um, mine does not have the quick release but all the ones I see online do so there you can see that groove and I kind of built this little block just like this and these are the things that I put I got the light and then I made a stand for my iPad I wish that it rotated that would be really cool small little parts bin and then the lamp which was really the only thing, three things that I've built so far. So here it is, once it's all done. And you can see here on the on the end vise, this is probably my favorite part. I, well, I really like the leg vise, but this end vise really turned out good. But yeah, you pull it up and you, it doesn't have any type of give or anything. So it, it doesn't have the quick relight release like all the ones I've seen online. I don't know if something's wrong with mine, but thank you so much for taking this adventure with me. And have a great day.